So last time we'd finished up with um, the electric field of a thin, uniformly charged circular ring. And uh, so we were looking at a case where we had a ring in the xy plane. And the z-axis was coming straight through the center. And the origin is at the center of the ring. And so if this is a positively charged thin ring, then you're, we're going to get an electric field that's pointing along the z direction, along the positive z direction. So that's the direction of E. And we went through the, the same process as we've been going through with these examples last time, where we broke it up into pieces and we summed up the electric field, the delta E, due to each, due to each individual piece as we went around uh, a full circle. Okay, so our integration variable here was theta, and we did an integral from 0 to 2 pi. We were able to come up with the magnitude of the electric field of the ring which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, delta Q, excuse me, not delta Q, just Q, Q charge of the ring. 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, Q times Z over R squared plus Z squared to the 3 halves, where capital R is the radius of the ring and Z is the distance away from the center. So, okay, so it's another result. We, uh, we wanted to check it. Last time we talked about checking it, we said that at the origin, we would expect the electric field to be equal to what? Zero, right? Because in that case, you're at a point where you're equidistant from every single little chunk, every single uh, piece of this ring as you go around the ring. And if each piece has we've broken up into equal pieces, each piece has the same charge, then the electric fields are all going to be pointing in opposite directions when you add them up and they're all going to cancel out. Okay, so you would expect to get zero and in fact the result does give you that. If you plug in z equals zero, then the electric field is in fact equal to zero. Um, let's see, do we want to spend time on this? What is there's actually another way you can check check this and it requires a little bit of creativity here if i think about a situation where uh let's do it this way okay So think about this. If you have a situation where you're very far away from the ring, what would you expect the electric field to look like? It would look like a point charge, right? As you get farther and farther away, the ring kind of recedes, and it basically looks like a point from your point of view, right? So that's the situation where if Z is much, much bigger than R, right? So let's look at the denominator. If Z is much, much bigger than R, then z squared or r squared plus z squared, r squared plus z squared is just approximately equal to z squared, okay? So what's that going to leave us in the denominator? We have 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, q times z over z squared to the 3 halves power. z squared to the 3 halves gives you z to the third. z divided by z th uh, to the third. So what are we going to get in the denominator when things cancel out? z squared, right? So we get 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, q over well, z squared, but it's, it's a charge over distance squared, which looks like the formula for the electric field of a point charge. Okay, so we're getting back something that makes sense. All right. 